This module introduces the technique of bronchoalveolar lavage in the ICU setting. Commonly referred to as BAL, it is performed using flexible bronchoscopy. Upon completion of this module, the learner will be able to identify the common indications and contraindications for performing BAL in critically ill patients. He or she will be able to identify the required equipment necessary to perform this procedure, and the learner also will be introduced to the steps necessary to execute this procedure safely. BAL offers access to the lower respiratory tract secretions, leading to a more accurate diagnosis of respiratory failure caused by infectious etiologies. Other indications for performing a BAL in patients are listed, but are not frequently performed in the ICU, and therefore will not be further discussed. The concept of BAL is straightforward. It relies on administering aliquots of sterile, non-bacterial static saline toward a targeted area of lung. This allows the instilled saline to mix with the alveolar content. The sample fluid is then collected by suction aspiration through the bronchoscope and sent for analysis. For infections, BAL should be targeted at the area of most disease radiographically. If no specific area can be defined, which can be the case with diffuse parenchymal processes such as ARDS, the BAL can be directed at either the middle lobe or the lingula. Patients with hemodynamic instability or those who cannot tolerate increased intracranial pressures should not have bronchoscopy performed. Likewise, patients who have life-threatening respiratory failure and cannot tolerate any degree of worsening hypoxia or hypercarbia also should not undergo BAL. Inserting the bronchoscope into the endotracheal tube will cause a dramatic decrease in the effective diameter of the endotracheal tube. This will reduce the effective tidal volume administered by the ventilator during bronchoscopy. The upper airway narrowing caused by the bronchoscope will also increase airflow resistance during the expiratory phase. This can result in increased intrathoracic pressure from incompletely exhaled tidal volumes. On the other hand, positive end expiratory pressure, or PEEP, which may be essential for adequate oxygenation, can be eliminated by vigorous bronchoscopic suctioning which would then result in desaturation. This also should be avoided. Pre-procedural preparation is important to the success of performing BAL. Therefore, it is important to ensure that the appropriate equipment necessary is available and easily accessible. Key items are shown in this labeled photo. A light source, a video monitor if needed for the bronchoscope, and equipment for suction tubing to attach to the scope is required, but are not shown here. Prior to actually performing bronchoscopy, one should pre-oxygenate the patient with 100% oxygen and order and administer pre-procedural sedation in analgesia. It is frequently useful in intubated patients to first perform inline endotracheal suctioning to clear any accumulated secretions in the upper airway and the endotracheal tube. This maneuver is also a useful test to determine if the patient should be preemptively given more sedation. In this example, 1 to 2 milliliters of 2% lidocaine can be administered via the endotracheal tube before the bronchoscopy adapter is attached to dampen this patient's airway sensitivity. Once inserted, the bronchoscope is guided as far as possible into the peripheral airway of the target location, avoiding use of suction if possible. Additional 1 to 2 milliliters of 2% lidocaine can be administered and directed at the carina and other bronchial bifurcations to decrease the airway irritation associated with bronchoscopy. Once wedged in the peripheral airway, it is often useful to apply brief, gentle suction to determine if the airway collapses with suctioning. If collapse of the airway lingers after the suction button is released, the scope may be wedged in too deeply and need to be retracted slightly. Also, one should use low pressure wall suction to avoid complete, prolonged wall collapse during suctioning, as this will also decrease the yield of lavage fluid collected. Once the bronchoscope is in an appropriate position, 30 milliliter aliquots of sterile saline are instilled through the wedged bronchoscope. The total volume instilled is usually 90 to 120 milliliters. One should see the airway mucosa distend and blanch during lavage installation, as shown here. Next, a sterile specimen container, referred to commonly as a Lucan's trap, is attached in line with the suction tubing to the bronchoscope. The lavage fluid is retrieved by suctioning through the bronchoscope into the specimen container. If the difference between the instilled lavage volume and the volume aspirated 
is greater than 100 milliliters, it is preferable to stop lavage in that particular segment. Once an adequate volume of aspirated lavage fluid is collected, the BAL procedure is terminated. Generally, 10 to 25 milliliters of lavage volume is sufficient for routine bacterial and fungal cultures. However, larger volumes may be required depending upon the specific tests to be run. Once the BAL is completed, the bronchoscope can be withdrawn or redirected. The collected sample is properly labeled and transported to the laboratory for analysis. It is unnecessary to routinely obtain a post-bronchoscopy radiograph unless there is a clinical indication.